if you want to know if you're a saint or not, it's very simple. Very simple. If you always think of somebody else, comfort, benefit before yourself, then you are a saint. Very simple like that. Selflessness is saintliness, okay? Selflessness is saintliness. Please continue watching. Supreme Master Ching Hai's lectures are not a complete meditation instruction. Please do not try alone. For free of charge guidance, please visit godsdirectcontact.org or contact any of our centers near you. Today's episode will be presented in English with subtitles in Arabic or Laksis, also known as Vietnamese, Bulgarian, Chinese, Czech, English, French, German, Hindi, Hungarian, Indonesian, Italian, Japanese, Korean, Malay, Mongolian, Persian, Polish, Portuguese, Punjabi, Romanian, Russian, Spanish, Telugu, and Thai. Hulyungan Shichongja Yerobunke, Kipuge, Insadirimida. Tonun, Tongdaun Hanguk Pusanu, Kim Soyonimida. Hanguken, Sutanyane Oxare, Tinigo Isimida. Korea Ranen Idumen, 고려 왕조에서 유래했습니다. 고려는 높고 아름답다는 뜻으로 한국 산수의 특징인 높은 산과 맑은 물을 잘 표현하고 있습니다. 한반도의 척추는 태백산맥으로 가장 웅장한 산인 백두산은 영적 구도심을 지닌 한국인들에게 신성한 장소로 여겨지고 있습니다. 신비로운 아름다움과 청정한 자연에 이끌려 수많은 순례자들과 관광객이 이 산을 방문하고 있습니다. 한국은 고요한 아침의 나라로 알려져 있습니다. 자랑스러운 문화와 전통을 지닌 한국은 옛것과 새것이 조화롭게 잘 어우러져 있습니다. 오랜 역사를 지닌 고궁과 신성한 사찰이 높은 고층 빌딩과 초현대적 건물들과 함께 공존하고 있습니다. 매력적으로 아름다운 한국을 소개해 드리게 되어 유난히 기쁩니다. 부처님께서 무한한 행복으로 여러분을 축복하시길 기원합니다. 수십 년간 칭하이 무상사께서는 신성한 가르침으로 세상을 밝혀 주셨습니다. 완전히 깨달은 스승인 칭하이 무상사님은 윤회의 순환에서 영원한 해탈을 이루고 내면의 신성한 본성을 즉시 발견하고자 하는 사람들에게 관음 법문을 전하고 계십니다. 관음 법문은 석가모니, 예수 그리스도, 선지자 무하메드, 구루 나낙과 같은 모든 깨달은 스승들께서 수행하신 법문입니다. 스승님께서는 우리가 늘 신을 기억하고 다른 이들에게 헌신적으로 봉사하며 우주의 법칙을 지키면 인간으로서 가장 높은 잠재력에 도달하고 지구상에서 우리의 목적을 진정으로 이해할 것이라 강조합니다. 
칭하이 무상사께서는 피난민, 노숙자, 자연재해 희생자 및 구호가 필요한 분들께 정기적으로 물질적 재정적 지원과 사랑을 전하시는 빛나는 자비의 모범입니다. 2006년 칭하이 무상사께서는 동양의 노벨 평화상이라 불리는 구시 평화상을 수상하셨으며 놀라운 자선활동과 인도주의적 활동으로 많은 상과 영예를 안았습니다. 아름다운 동물 친구들을 대변하는 진실된 목소리로 스승님은 평화롭고 사랑이 담긴 채식을 홍보하고 인류가 생명의 신성함을 깨닫고 모두 비건 채식을 하는 평화롭고 영광스러운 세상이 오면 동물들과 인류가 행복한 조화 속에 살수 있다는 비전을 알리고 계십니다. 칭하이 무상사께서는 다양한 방법으로 비건 채식을 확산하고 있습니다. 대안적인 삶 전담 배포, 국제적인 비건 채식 레스토랑 체인 러빙헛, 스프린 마스터 TV 뿐 아니라 정기적으로 영향력 있는 정부 및 미디어 지도자들에게 메시지를 전하고 기후변화에 관한 TV 회의에 참여하는 등 알려지지 않은 많은 일도 하고 계십니다. 스승님의 노력은 동물에게 친절한 생활 방식에 대하여 그리고 이 자비로운 방식이 어떻게 기후변화로부터 지구를 구하며 국가 간의 지속적인 평화를 가져올 수 있는지에 관한 전 세계적 인식 변화에 큰 영향을 미쳤습니다. 칭하이 무상사께서는 수년간 아메리카에서 아프리카, 유럽, 오세아니아로 전 세계를 방문하시며 다양한 영적인 주제에 관해 대중과 제자들과 함께 수백 회의 강연과 담화를 가지셨습니다. 스승과 제자 사이에서 그녀의 통찰 있는 강연을 전하게 되어 영광입니다. 불교 이야기, 흰 비단천을 갖고 태어난 소녀 3부 중 1부 2015년 8월 28일 프랑스 영어 강연입니다. It's okay, wherever. If, if there's a room, you can sit anywhere you want. Did you give the food to the cameraman? Yes. The one that did not have? Can you join in the morning? Yes. Yeah. Which one? You, you got it? Okay, good. Just share a little. Otherwise, I got too fat. <laughs> Tomorrow, I have to eat the public's food. It's better. <sighs> the Vietnamese food is too, <laughs> too good. I'm begin to look like her. <laughs> okay. Ah. <sighs> Meow, meow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. This is a story about uh, charity again, yeah? Not just normal charity, but offer with sincerity to the saints, you know, saintly people like the monks or the Buddhas, yeah? It's very difficult to know if a lay person is a saint or not. <laughs> but the At the Buddha's time, when there is a monk, yeah, next to the Buddha, near with the Buddha together, then people think, okay, these are saintly being, yeah. So they make offering to these people. It's easier than make offering to a lay person, you know. And also, lay follower, they don't go on the street uh, for arm. You see, only the Buddhas at that time and his monks could do that. So they have the chance to offer. To the monk, yeah. I'm not saying that the lay followers are not saintly people. Many of you, some of you at least, are saintly, yeah. Yeah. 
if you want to know if you're a saint or not, it's very simple. Very simple. If you always think of somebody else, comfort, benefit before yourself, then you are a saint. Very simple like that. Selflessness is saintliness, okay? Selflessness is saintliness. Any story, any history, any any religions, you, you can learn that. Yeah, like Jesus also sacrificed for his disciples and for the world. Buddha sacrificed a lot, and you saw that. Yes, and many others, and also parents are also saintly in a way. You know, in in the way that they are very unconditional, uh, taking care of their children, yeah, and love them so much. But again, this is another kind of a little less saintly because the parents uh, love the children because it's their children. <laughs> it's natural, yeah. So, but what I mean is, it's unconditional love. Yeah, that's a saintly love. Yeah. Most of all, the love are kind of attachment. It's not really love. You capish, yeah? Yes. Very good. So intelligent. I don't I don't need to teach you anything. You know everything. <laughs> okay, this is a story about two very poor persons. Very, very poor, very extremely poor. You think you're poor, but this is really beyond poor. No. So poor that they had only one piece of cloth. A rack, not the a rack, you know, very old and tattered rack. So that if the husband go out to beg in for food, then the woman has to stay home. Only one cloth to cover themselves to go out beg in for food. Understand? That poor. Okay. And then the the the, the wife have to stay in the hut hiding. Okay? Cannot both go out together. Yeah. Now, thus I have heard from Anand. Eh? At one time the Buddha. Uh, in uh, in the Save country, in the uh, you know Prince, oh, it's a different, it's different uh, ashram in Kiwan ashram. I'm glad that many of you are not sick anymore. You are sick, huh? Tara. Okay, When you first came, you also quite a few, right? Yeah, and now all gone, right? Or maybe you don't have mask anymore. <laughs> huh? <laughs> no more mask. <laughs> so it's gone. Right? It's gone, huh? Yeah. So quick? Yes. Why? Mask of power. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. Why is that? Because uh, cold. It takes long time to heal. You know, to 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 um to to finish, huh? Yeah. But then you come here and. Just one or two days. You know, yesterday already, don't see anything. The day before also. Only the first day came, eh? Yes. I have mask all over. Yeah, it's good then. I'm glad. Maybe, I don't know, maybe it's better here, no aircon. Right? Yes. Or what? Or it's more peaceful here? You're more relaxed or something? You know, you have to relax because if you're excited, you you... you <laughs> You have to wait for the toilet. You can't be too excited, right? <laughs> Relax. <laughs> Deep breathing. <sighs> waiting, waiting. Patient, patient. My God, are you still in there? <laughs> Every day you're calling God, my God. <laughs> so deep breathing, patient, relax, then that cure your sickness, you know? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> It's good. <laughs> okay then. Uh, it's it's a shame that we, you cannot stay long, huh? It's a good 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 place, right? We could stay like this forever, every day, eating, sitting, eating, <laughs> sitting, <laughs> eating, <you>. sitting, <laughs> talking, yeah, <laughs> yeah, laughing. Yeah. What a life, huh? Yes. Yeah. Like dream a dream yeah. come true. Yeah. <laughs> Your dream come true. Yeah. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
<laughs> I'm thinking. No, it's just not always like this. You know, it depends. I think I, ch- I think it's because your group are lucky. Yes, yes. we are. Yes. Uh, yes. yes, number one, number two. I am lucky. Yeah, <laughs> because if if another group maybe not as good, you know, that will even neck in me even more. You understand? Yeah, it's just this group may be good because you've been working hard. With you know a lot of people, you had no time to to make trouble. To think. <laughs> no time to think of trouble at all. <laughs> Sweat, and cook, 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 chop, 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 chop. Oh, first of all, my God, where do they all come from? Thousands of people. Why didn't they tell me? <laughs> so the mind becomes so tired, you know, cannot think anymore. So it become more easy for me to handle. You know? Yeah, that's what it is. But you guys are lucky. You're very lucky, really. Yeah. Yes. In India, it's many places are still, you know, not uh, not like what we we used to. Mm. So if you complain about here, maybe I send you to India <laughs> <laughs> or Thailand. Even no need India. Thailand's good enough, right? Like last time. Yes. Mm. Sixteen flight of floor. Sixteen flight of stairs, yeah. Run, run, run. I wonder how you keep it all the way up to the sixteen floor. Yeah. You know? Oh, thirty-seven floor. I was thirty-seven on, even. I was on the thirty-seven. Thirty-seven. <laughs> how you keep it going? How you keep it until there? Huh? I went up once and took my pair of clothes and I went down. Never come back. Never come back. <laughs> I don't blame you. At that time, we ran the almost the, ran the whole hotel. Well, a lot of people don't come back to their room. It's too too high, too high. So the whole room empty, you know. Later, the good good Thai government, so good. The local government, they rent, they rent the toilet for us. I know nobody even thought about that. I also didn't know so much problem. I'm busy with my thing, you know. And then the organizer, the other people don't even think of you, and they didn't rent toilet for you. We could have done that. Hmm? People they are afraid of strange thing, you know. Yes. You know, we are harmless. Just sit there doing nothing. We do nothing, do we? Huh? We are the group of truly doing nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I just sit there like this almost every day, <laughs> except eating and drinking and just sitting, <laughs> waiting for God. <laughs> sometimes he comes, sometimes he doesn't come. <laughs> And we sit and wait and wait. Hey, we really do nothing. So this group is truly harmless, no? <laughs> yeah, anybody welcome to come have a look what we're doing. <laughs> the thing is, we don't do anything. <laughs> we have a couple of knives to chop vegetable. <laughs> That's it, you know, and chop fruit. And if the kitchen too busy, we. Chop the fruit with our hand, with our <laughs> teeth. <laughs> so simple, right? Yes. We don't even need knife. No? Next time, if it's too busy, you just give them carrot, you know. <laughs> yeah, they, they have their teeth. No? Yeah. Eating raw is good for you, I heard. <laughs> Why bother cooking? <laughs> yeah, many of the fruit can eat raw. But the thing about eating raw is that you soon you soon become so skinny. You know why? It's so boring that you don't want to eat, <laughs> and then you lose weight quickly. Yeah, yeah. Who who cares? Yeah, who cares? Yeah. There is a uh, one of uh, a few people. They they eat just uh, everything as is. They don't even wash. Yeah, they call it instinctive eating. Yeah. Like in uh, like instinct, you know, eating by instinct or intuition. Yeah. So they go, for example, go to garden, eh? and pay some money, or in their own garden, they go to a cherry tree, for example, and they eat, 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 eat all the cherry. That's it, and they're done until they don't want to eat no more. Okay. And the next meal, they go to apple tree, eat, 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 eat. <laughs> until they they fall. Yeah. And if they go out to buy vegetable, for example, I saw it. They just take the vegetable and eat it right there with the earth on it, with soil and everything on it. They say it's even better like that. Ah, you're healthier. Our our body is made of clay. You know, we are dust. 
<laughs> we are dust. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You don't know you are dust from clay. Yeah, God made Adam with a piece of clay. And he took a rib out of uh, him and then make you. <laughs> yeah, there was a joke, you know, that in the the a little kid learned in in school that Adam, uh, Eva was made from Adam's uh, piece of rib, one rib. So when he come home one day, he just lay there like as if he's very sick, and the mother asked him, well, "What's wrong with you?" He say, uh, "My my." Uh, Ribs are here painful. I think I'm going to have a wife. <laughs> yeah, that's what they eat. Yeah, but the one bad thing is that they also eat raw meat. They go, yeah, they go to the the shop and just buy a piece of lamb chop or whatever chop chop, and then eat it right there. It's the insect and. Uh, that I did not know. Yeah, that I did not know. But uh, I saw them eat raw f- for raw meat as well. Anything raw has more more light. But I wouldn't like to try that either. The live insects maybe has more light, but uh, I don't want to try that. Please don't try. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good place already. I have another mountain. Not not this one, you know. Another mountain in another country. It's really wide. It's before, in the beginning, when I bought it, there's no water. There's a well water. Every day I want to cook, I have to draw the water up. That's no problem. That's no problem. It's, it's okay. Just there's no toilet, no bathroom, nothing. Just that little well. And the well is not even uh, uh, from, from the earth. It's uh, from the rain that collects it, and then it runs down there. So after you use it up, you have to buy water or do something else and get water. But this is it's okay. We can go we can buy water or we can go down to the, the town a uh, village and then take the water, the natural water that's running and you don't take it lower lower part, you take on the upper part, then it's clean. So we were okay. We're okay. It's just that in the beginning I did not know that. So, and then uh, we have nothing. No bathroom, no toilet, nothing. We just have to, you know, Take care accordingly. Yeah, but there were not too many people. Sometimes I'm alone. I'm alone there. Yeah, and when I came back, the grass grow higher than me. I have to, you know, like swimming, <laughs> swimming in the grass to find my door. <laughs> yeah, and uh, uh, and then feeling sorry for some grass so that I can open the the door. But I was very happy there. Very happy. Long time ago, when I had not even Supreme Master Television, you know, before Supreme Master Television, uh, whenever I finished with some lecture or something, I always went there alone. And sometimes I take some people. Later on, when I have dogs and all that, then more people come. But before that, whenever I went there, maybe just one driver or two. I'm very happy to be there. Yeah, and then I, such a place like that. I feel happier than anywhere else in the first class hotel or presidential suit and all that. This is all just, just facades, you know, just appearance. Yes, I'm more happy over there. Yes, and because very quiet, very very quiet. There's neighbors. It's too far away, too far away. Yeah. But even then, they also the neighbors. They also from foreign country. They also the ones who like quiet. <laughs> so they don't bother you. You don't bother them. Yes, we have to use a gas cooker. Yes, everything is gas like that. Yes. So there was no electricity, nothing. Yeah. But it was very happy time. I don't remember ever feeling so happy like there. So being poor doesn't mean. Unhappy. The less thing I have, the happier I feel. I feel freer, you know. Less crumble, less burden, and less thing to worry about. Just a necessity, bare necessity only. And then I feel like I'm in control of my world, you know. Yeah. <laughs> when I am with people, everybody controls me with their different thing. Not like they tell me what to do. It just they impose their personality, their wish, their 
uh, mood, uh, their emotion, their fear, their uh, their desire on me. Understand? Imposing on me. Sometimes feel oppressive. Yeah. But when you're alone, you feel so free, <laughs> so quiet, so good. There was a Zen student telling his master, Oh, all-knowing, all-wise, all-compassionate one, please take me to the place of perfect peace. <laughs> peace, eh? Yeah? Hoa bình, yeah, hoping. No, not a peace, <laughs> but <laughs> peace, huh? peace. P-E-A-C-E, okay. <laughs> and then the master say, Peace? Yeah, I can, but if I take you there, that place won't have peace anymore. <laughs> That is the thing, <laughs> truly like that, yes. So that's why I say I'm lucky, because maybe your group is compatible, understand? Yes. Less trouble, yes. quiet, and truly just appreciate to be happy, yeah, yes. and don't wish for too many things. Yes. More simple inside. <laughs> You're working too hard, your mind's all gone. <laughs> <laughs> all your desires run away from you. <laughs> because they say, oh, if we stay here, she will eat us also, she cook us too. You know, the <laughs> desires and all the things, they run away from you. Yeah, You work too hard, they run away from you. Mm. Uh, okay, so how many people stay until October, including the one outside? Uh, okay, then we don't have much to cook. And now that I take care of everything, make it all comfortable, and then you all gone. <laughs> and over there, how many? See how many are there also want to stay? Only one? Two. Two only? Four. Four? Uh, okay. Mm. Yeah. Stay until October. Yeah. Mm. November. Okay. November. <laughs> October, November, no problem. Yes. And um, uh, if you have to go, you go. Later, you want to come back, you can come back. Yeah? yeah. All of you very rich people, come, go, come, go. <laughs> Mucho dinero. <laughs> lot of money. Phew. Okay, okay. We go back to this serious <laughs> story. Originally, originally, according to Buddhism and the believer and the tradition, when you read sutra and all that, you have to like put on incense, flower, you know, and bow to the sutra first and thank all the Buddhas and Bodhisattva in ten directions, all respectfully, before you read it, okay? And then you cover the sutra also with silk, or, you know, beautiful cloth and to cover it. I knew all that, but just nowadays the beings are so very difficult to, to teach. So I was thinking, I apologize to all the Buddha. I say, if I've done something wrong, according to the tradition, you know. My heart is full of respect. It's just that I cannot always do that. So please, all the sin, whatever I've done wrong, is all on me. At least other people, they hear the names of the Buddha, according to the Sutta, they will get benefit. Yes, because I cannot just go in everywhere and put incense and flower and bow to the Buddha and all that, understand? Yes, I just make it more popular. Yeah, more easy, simple, so that the people who hear the names of the Buddha may be saved from hell. The one that I cannot reach, the one that don't listen to my teaching. Understand? Yes. They can listen to this and help themselves. But for you, the one who knows, if you recite the Buddha's name or the five names, you should have very much respect and grateful gratefulness in your heart, okay? Yes. Thank you. Then you have more more benefit that way for yourself, all right? Okay? Yes. Nowadays, if I go outside and say, okay, I'm, I'm going to, to tell you this sutra, but you have to bow first and make a, a flower and incense and light and fruit offering, they say, oh, forget it, ma'am, where are you from? Which, <laughs> which planet are you from, you know? Suppose I go to America and tell them that, they say, hey, why don't you go home and <laughs> hug your dog or something? Yeah, they do that. So we just make it more popular, more simple, 
and whoever has affinity with the Buddhas will understood that and will have respect for the names of the Buddha and all the sutra that I read. Okay? And I want you to have respect in your heart. Okay? Even we don't have incense and flower, have respect in your heart. Okay? Same with Jesus Christ or Prophet Muhammad, yeah, or Guru Nanak, or Guru Mahavira, all the Buddhas, okay, in different names, in different countries. We have to have respect for all of them, understand? Yeah. All right. First, I have heard, this is from Anan. At one time, the Buddha is in a Savi country and stay in the ashram called Kihuan. He was um, preaching there for monks and lay people alike. Yeah. At that time, in that area, there was a noble, rich man who has one uh, daughter. Yeah, she is very beautiful, has a very uh, dignified and respectful manner, mm. and you can rank her top, you know, top one or two in the country from all aspects. Yeah. A very worthy person. Mm. But there is one thing very strange about this girl. The moment she was born, she has a, a piece of white silk wrapped around her body. Yeah. <laughs> And then uh, the parents feel a little worry, you know, so they call the astrologer to come and they check out what is it, yeah. Mm. So the astrologer, the uh, the seer, yeah, the clairvoyant person, tell 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 the parent, you 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 two should not worry. Yes, uh, your daughter is a meritorious person. Very, very worthy. Yes, I will call her Tukli. Yeah, something like yes. Then this girl named Tukli, as she grow, uh, as she grow up, the the piece of uh, silk also grow with her. <laughs> uh, yeah. She is not only beautiful. She come from a very rich and noble family. Yes. So many, many gentlemen, you know, young boys came and asked for her hands of marriage. But she didn't want anybody up to date, no. Yeah. One day the parents called some of, uh, of the jewelry come, jeweler come, come to her house to make some of the uh, jewelry. Yeah. And she asked her, uh, Respected father, what are you making all this jewelry for? And he said, Yeah, you are already grown up. I'm making all this, make ready for you to marry and, you know, <laughs> to marry and have a family. So she said, Father, uh, husband and wife are just temporarily union, a temporary union. Yeah, I think it's useless. Yes. Is only making more trouble, pain, and suffering to my life, yeah. in life. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, not just suffering for me, but also for other people. You know, concerning people. You know, maybe husband as well. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure, huh? Mm. I myself really think and wish to become a monk. You know, become a renunciate. That would be the best solution and the best idea and the best thing to do for me. So the parents has only one daughter. They loved her so much and always do whatever she wish up to now. So they also let them let let her go become uh, a nun. Yeah. Next day he went out and uh, buy some beautiful silk to bring home to make clothes, yes. And she asked, she asked uh, her, Dear Father, oh, 
what kind of clothes you want to make with this silk. And the, the father said, oh, I want to, to make a chasa for you from this beautiful, you know, the monk's robe for you. Uh, so the, the girl said, dear father, I don't have to, you don't have to make it, okay? The clothes that I'm wearing right now is enough. Mm. Please just bring me to the Buddha. Yeah. <laughs> so next day, the two parents and the girl went to uh, pay obeisance to the Buddha. Mm. And then she said, Obeisance to the world honored one. The human body is difficult to attain, difficult to have. Uh, to meet a living Buddha is even more difficult. Please have mercy and accept me to be, uh, you know, one of your nuns, so that I can continue to practice the liberating uh, uh, way of of Dharma. So the Buddha say immediately, "Welcome, beat you." Mm. Actually, if if you want to say be chill for none, then be chuni, you know, be chuni. But it doesn't matter. At that time, the Buddha just make it all equal, I guess. Yeah. After the Buddha say that, is you know, her hair suddenly fall down, and and the the piece of uh, white uh, silk on her body changed into the chasa, I mean the monk's robe. Yeah, you be careful if you're going to the Buddha. Don't say anything. <laughs> Your hair will be all gone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In your clothes, your beautiful robe will be gone. <laughs> and then you wear those patched robe of monk. Okay. In many of the stories, many of the sutras, it's mentioned all the time that when the Buddha say, welcome beat you, then their hair just fall off <laughs> and their clothes change into a chasa, I mean a monk's uh, garment. But sometimes they say that he asked somebody else to go and shave this and that person's hair and uh, also give him clothes. So I don't know which one to believe. <laughs> Maybe both. Maybe sometimes the Buddha like to show his affection by making the hair <laughs> of the person fall off immediately. Uh, maybe sometimes he too busy to do that. So he asked one of his monks to go and shave the head. I wonder why Buddha bother if he can do that. Everybody come just a head. <laughs> hair, hair off, hair off. It's simple. Yeah. And then after that, the Buddha asked the uh, uh, Dai Aidao, the uh, Bichuni, Mm. to take care of her and teach her how to become a nun. And she was very, very diligent in her practice. Not very long after she attained a heart, uh, just like all the monks before, so quick. My God, I wish I see the Buddha now so I can give him all, all of my disciples and say, Buddha, make their hair come off. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, use magic to make a chasa for them, then they will not think of anything else. Yeah? <laughs> because when the Buddha say, if the Buddha say welcome and the hair come off, mean it won't grow back again. <laughs> so, so there's no second chance for you to come back home and see, see, say something, think of anything else. <laughs> okay, yeah. When I saw such a strange phenomenon, I, Anand, huh? I uh, kneel down in front of the Buddha and asked, Obeisance to the world honor one, Tukli Bichuni, uh, in the former life, what has she done? What has uh, she sown as a good deed and married? So that mm, today, in this life, she was born into a very noble and rich family. And then even uh, a piece of uh, white silk follow her since birth. Yeah. And now she has a chance to meet, meet you and then 
practiced not too long and became already a heart. Could you please tell us, you know, the assembly? And the Buddha say, Anan, listen very well. I will tell you. So the Anan say, Yes, uh, Buddha, we are listening. Yes. And then Buddha say, Anan, long, long, past life, long, 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 long time ago. Yeah, there was a Buddha uh, coming to this world named named Tibati. We heard this Buddha name all the time. It must be very. Uh, he lived very long. This Buddha, you know, at that time, I guess no pollution, you know, all the food are organic, you know? <laughs> yeah. They don't have uh, insecticides, pesticides like nowadays, eh? And the street is not full of uh, exhaust fum from the cars, eh? Nothing in the air from the airplane, no atom bomb testing, no bombing, no, no all kind of these uh, explosive, uh, you know, and no, no pollution of any kind. Water clean, air clean, yeah, sky clean, street clean, yeah, food clean. Yeah, water and food is all good. I guess, therefore, the, uh, the Buddha uh, at that time, a you know, long time ago, before the Buddha's time, he lived very long. Uh, often, every day, uh, the Buddha Tibati and, and all his uh, monks, you know, going around, to preach uh, the true Dharma for the people in different places. The king, wherever the Buddhas and his disciples went, the king and the, offic- the court officials and the citizens, everybody uh, line up the street and make offerings. And they also uh, organized many uh, different uh, gathering so that the Buddha can come and make a sermon and preach to everyone. Yes. At that time, one of his disciples, one of the Tibati Buddhas, a monk, yeah, a bhikkhu, he was a very compassionate monk. Yes, He would like to spread all the blessing and merit to any corner of the world he can. So he he go around traveling everywhere and preaching, yes. And wherever he go, of course, he go and take arm also. Uh, so like that, he can has more have more affinity with people and have chance to preach the Buddha's Dharma to each and every one that he can, that he meet. At that time, there was a, there was a lady, she is very very poor yeah uh, two of them husband and wife has only one piece of rag to cover their body yeah so if the husband went out to bake then the wife has to stay at home without any clothes on yeah and then uh, sitting inside one of the the dry grass uh, heap that people put somewhere to hide herself and if the um, wife take turn to go out begging for food, then the husband stay home like that, all naked inside the, the heap of grass. They don't even have house. I think. This Bichu, he passed by there and then he saw her. She was probably begging nah, on the street. So he passed by and he saw her and he said to her, Lady, you should know uh, that... Uh, to have a human life, human body is extremely difficult. Yes, and to to see a living Buddha in in this life is even more, more, more extremely difficult. Nowadays, the Buddha is in our world, and he's uh, preaching everywhere. You should go there, listen to the Buddha sermon. It will be limitless merit for you now and in the future. Yeah, you should know also anyone who who is poor, yeah, or in a lowly position because they have been greedy and uh, uncharitable in the former life. Anyone who 
uh, often give charity or who can give something chari- to charity, they will be uh, in a noble and rich position yes. in uh, many lifetimes. So. so the woman, after her, the Bichu monk say that, she will say, or obeisance to reverence. I'm so happy to have been able to hear your teaching. Yes, please stay here. Wait for me. Yeah. And then he, she went inside, and tell to her husband. Oh, she went in the in the house. Probably just a little thatch hut or something with a heap of grass inside to cover whenever they, they don't have clothes. So he say, mm, honey, you know. <laughs> Oh, darling, mm. outside uh, there is a, a, a monk who uh, have advised us to come and to pay obeisance, obeisance to the Buddha uh, and also advise us to do some charity work. Yeah, <laughs> because in the former life we didn't do it. That's why in this lifetime we became poor. Yeah. So, uh, and our life is suffering so much, yeah? Uh, no matter what, we have to find a way to, to do some offering, to do some charity or offering, so that we can sow some good seeds for the future at least. Yeah, otherwise this life is already so suffering. If we don't do anything for the future, then future life will be worse. Yeah. How, how can it be any worse than <laughs> no clothes, only one piece of cloth? Yeah. Okay, so the husband say, "Look, what do we have to offer? Hmm? Uh, today we have some food to eat if people give to us. Tomorrow we sometimes we don't have, and the next day we don't even know if we have any meal to eat. What can we offer to anybody or do charity?" Okay, so the 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 wife say. Dear husband, eh? mm. in the former life we have been greedy and stingy. That's why we didn't uh, uh, give anything to anyone. That's why in this lifetime we became so poor and so suffer. If this lifetime we don't do anything, we don't give anything to charity, then in the future what can we rely on to survive? Now you have to listen to me. I decided that we have to do charity. <laughs> I must offer. Yeah. So the the husband was thinking, ah, maybe my wife is hidden, has hidden some, you know, some money, some property somewhere. Ah, yeah. So then we just say okay to make peace. Yeah. To check out what she has. Yeah. Okay, do it. <laughs> okay, you can. You can make a charity. I'm very happy. Okay, all right. And then now she said, Husband, darling, honey, sweetheart, (laughs) I want to offer this piece of cloth. (laughs) Yeah? You okay? So the husband said, But both of us, we have only this piece of cloth. To, to go out and, and to beg for food. If we give it away, how are we going to cover ourselves in order to go out to, to beg for food? Then both of us just go sit here and stare at each other until we die? So the, the wife say, Darling, sooner or later, we die anyway. Yeah, every human... Uh, was born will be dead, yeah, someday. So even you give to charity or you don't give offering, you you will die, yeah. So is it rather that we give something and then if we die in the fo- in now but in future life we will have a better chance, okay? And then we will have good merit, you know, we will be rich and noble and good position, yeah. But if we don't do it, then sooner or later we die anyway, and then we have nothing. Yeah. So the husband hear that, heard that, and he also feels it's logical. Okay, okay, he was very glad, very pleased, you know, uh, joyfully give. 
And she said, oh, that's very good. You you talk very logically. Okay, okay. Uh, so uh, now, now, okay, so we, we will choose the death. And then, uh, so that we can offer this uh, piece of cloth for in the future, for the future. Mm. So both of them, okay, agree, happy. So then he said to, she came out and said, um, Reverend, great Reverend, please, can you uh, climb up to the roof and wait there for me? Because I have some very humble, small thing. I want to offer it to the Buddha. Mm. So the monk said, if you want to make offering and you, you just offer in front of, of me right now, why, why I have to go to the roof, <laughs> the roof of the house? So she say, uh, dear reverence, yeah, uh, both of us have only one piece of cloth. So I'm worried we become so nude and it's very, very, uh, very impolite and very sinful. My body cannot cover. We have nothing to cover. So that's why. That's why, but it's okay if you don't want to go on the roof, then it's okay. So she went inside, they closed the, the door of the house, and she threw the piece of cloth outside. The Bichu saw that both husband and wife so sincere like that, so he accepted, you know, the dirty and filthy, smelly piece of cloth. He accepted, you know, with, with the generous heart, and he even blessed them. Yes. And then he bring the, brought the piece of cloth went back to the Buddha. Oh. When he arrived in the ashram, the Buddha immediately asked him, bring that piece of cloth here for me, <laughs> to me. Yes, obeisance to the world honor one. Please accept the sincere heart through this offering of the uh, husband and wife, very, very poor husband and wife. The Buddha took the piece of cloth and seemed very moved, yeah, touched. At that time, in the great assembly, there are king and great prime ministers, ministers and other rich and famous, powerful people and other, other ordinary people all over in the assembly were re listening to the Buddha. So they feel strange that why the Buddha holding that piece of stinking and tattered piece of cloth, you know, dirty and smelly and tattered like that, and why does the Buddha look pensive? Yeah, because of that. Yeah. So uh, the Buddha knew what all the people were thinking. Yes. So he said, In this whole great assembly of all of the people who want to make offering and who is making offering, none of you can compare to the purity of this husband and wife who offer me this piece of cloth. He can feel it. He can feel the love, the energy, the sincerity, the purity of the couple. Yeah, that's why he said, oh. After the Buddha heard the Buddha say that, everybody was feeling kind of frightened, uneasy. And the queen uh, immediately, happily took out her royal robe, yeah, and all the jewelry. Yeah. And the king also took out his robe and clothes and uh, uh, money, uh, whatever, you know, at that time they have. And then the king and the queen, you know, Asked the, his uh, subordinate to bring all this to uh, the couple, to give it to the couple, couple, um, the the poor couple. Oh, now they have lots of money. Yeah, and then they invited her to come, them to come immediately to the Buddha's preaching area. Oh, you have anything similar? <laughs> Go find the Buddha and give it, and then maybe the king or the queen of this country. We don't have any king and queen, so too bad, yes. Because of that, the Buddha also, by the way, preaching the merit of charity, yeah. And also, 
the the bad consequence of being greedy and uh, greedy and 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 stingy, yeah, mm. for everybody. Also, the sin of stealing, yeah, of taking things from people. So many people at that time inspired to do charitable deed. At this time, the Buddha remind the whole assembly and Anand. He said, Anand, you should know, the wife of, uh, the, the poor wife at that time, now is a Bichu, Bichu Ni now, the one with the white, white suit, yeah. Because she has such a purity, such a pure heart, a sincere, humble heart to offer this piece of cloth at that time to that Buddha. So now, 91 aeons, everywhere she was born, always have this silk, piece of silk, rub around her, natural, yeah, and clean, you know. No need washing machine, nothing, I guess not. And always born, always she was born in rich, powerful, famous family, and like nothing in her life, yeah. At that time, she was listening to the Buddha, you know, and she was inspired, truly in her heart, want to be liberated and to uh, to attain, you know, to attain a Buddhahood and all that. Therefore, today she met me and she can attain the Ahat level so quickly. Yes. It's not that quick, it's 91. <laughs> eons, eons. Yeah. Not 91 live, 91 eons. But it's no problem, right? Time is nothing. She always born in rich family anyway, right? No problem. Mm. Yeah. All of you should also believe in uh, charity and uh, try to to be diligent in charity. And then in the future, you will have very great merit and a good life, or something like that. So everybody in that uh, assembly just aspire, inspire to to make offering. Yeah, and then they all bow to the Buddha and went home. Finish the story. You see, yesterday we have also the story about the Buddha. He 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 also did such an incredible charity. Work, give him his, give him his eyes, not just normal eyes, but the far seeing eyes. You know, you probably were thinking, why he bother? You know, giving sacrifice so much just for one person. What is the use? Just one person, right? When you think like that, yeah. Who can answer this? Tell me. Why just for one person and make such a great sacrifice? Anybody know? Hmm? Yes. Even um, the Buddha sacrificed for one person, but in the whole assembly. Oh, it's better. People want to listen to you. But the whole assembly get affected and change their heart to a better one. Good. Excellent. Yeah, very good. Yes, that's also one way to say that. And. Anybody else has any? Yes. Can you speak English at all? No. Okay, then speak Chinese. Because I think the Buddha's love is equal. It's equal to everyone. Hmm. Of course. But why is it so difficult for one person to be she say one person, you know, if uh, if they they have a wicked heart, then the Buddha has to <laughs> kind of destroy it, and the other one say, "Ni chuo shuo wang qi la." Bing tang. Bing tang. the Buddha is uh, has uh, how you say, fair. huh? It's a fair, being fair. Uh. He doesn't discriminate. Yeah, he loves each one equally. Yeah, that's both also okay. But 
Yes. And she say in English already, you know, so. Maybe Buddha want to be a good example. Then his disciple and uh, all uh, his uh, believing will be very touched in, indeed. Then they can up more. Uh -huh. Did she already say similar? Yes. Okay. It's uh, more or less all of you are right. It's just like this. One person is not unimportant. Yes. Because one person, even the Buddha uh, saw affinity with one person only, you see. But that person has a life after life, have wife, children, you know, relatives and friends. And then if that person becomes liberated in the far, 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 far future, when the Buddha became Buddha, then many of five, six, seven, nine generations also liberated. And then it affects his friends, his whoever around him. And his uh, five, six, seven, nine generation also affect other people around. So there's a lot of people as well. Yes. Mm. Uh, that is the thing. Huh? Yes. Mm. And, and if this one person became a heart, for example, then he can also save many other people. And then many of that many people can also affect, you know, save many other many people. And that many, many other people also influence many, many, many other people. Yeah. It's just like a drop of oil, you know, it slowly will spread out. Yeah. It's like that. So one person is not unimportant. It's truly like that. Okay. You see, just now, uh, you see the two. The two uh, husband and wife, huh? Yeah. <sighs> Just to to offer such a piece of cloth like that, and the Buddha took it because they're so sincerity, their pure heart. It's not just for the stinking piece of cloth, because the Buddha is a Buddha, and all the king and rich people offer him a lot of clothes, yeah, to wear, to to make clothes. Oh, he don't care about this piece. He just took the the sincerity of their heart and blessed them. Immediately, you see, just just offer one piece of dirty and filthy and old clothes, and then immediately have gold, money, jewelry, and silk, and royal robes even. So this is an example of immediate effect of charity. Yes. But many of other charity effects will come more later, later in life or later next lives. Yeah. That's, that's why in many of the Buddha's book he emphasized that. But how come? How come many people make offering to the Buddha, for example, or do paying the stupa and all that? Supposed to be a lot of good merit. How come they? don't become a heart or they don't become monk or they don't get enlightenment right away. Anybody know? How come they enjoy richness only for many lifetimes, until long, long aeons after? Why? To compare with the woman to offer the piece of cloth, she, she, is, the, she is sincere, much sincere, because that's, that is all she has. And the other may have more than that. The other may what? The the other offer something. Uh -huh. But to compare with the woman to offer the only clothes she have, that's all she have. Understand? understand. No, no, it's not that. It's not that what I ask. Um, many people offer to the Buddha. Yeah? Many, many lifetimes. Even poor people offer just flowers or something, you know? They, why don't they just follow the Buddha right away? And they just offer stones or flowers or some two coins, you know? Because they just offer to wish for, for richness. The same with this woman, because she was very poor. So when she offered that, she sincerely offered because she respects the Buddha and believes in the Buddha. But she just wishes she get a better life in the next life. At that time, when she offered it, she does not think of Buddhahood or liberation, nothing. Only after she has been able to go afterward, after that, or the king and queen give her clothes and that, and then in, 
and then invite her to come to the Buddha to listen. Then, after she listened to the Buddha sermon, then she inspired. She is inspired to become、uh, one of the saints in the future. And then, of course, therefore, the two different merit she has. The first merit is she offer her clothes so that she be not so poor and miserable like this lifetime. You know, she become rich and you know. Uh, comfortable life. Then she got that. You see, and the second merit is come later when she listened to the Buddha afterward, and then she become enlightened, and she aspire to want to have something more than just material things. She aspired for enlightenment, Buddhahood, sainthood, liberation. You see, so there are two merits, but it's too late. Come after. You see, <laughs> so before that. She enjoy richness and comfortable life for ninety one aeons. Ah,、uh, too bad. Yeah, but of course, it's normal. Just like the the boy given two coins to the Buddha, and many many lifetime, always have coin in the, in the hand, a golden, not aluminium that he gave, but the, <laughs> the golden coins. See what I mean? But then, because after some reason, because he also. After somehow that he also want to be liberated, then after they enjoy all the richness that accumulated, no, yeah, the, through through the offering, he has to enjoy all that first, and then after met another Buddha and became enlightened and became a heart. You see what I mean? So it depends on what you wish for, nah.、No? Yes. Otherwise, you wonder why that that woman, nah,、no? already invited come to listen to the Buddha. Why couldn't she be immediately enlightened or become a heart then? Yeah, why she has to spend ninety-one life? Because a different karma bear fruit at different time. It's like that. You see? Yeah. So many of the people offer things to the Buddha because they didn't want it liberation at that time. But of course, when you're very poor, the only thing you think about is, you know. Rich fam, rich house, rich family, richness, so that more comfortable. Yeah, when every day you have to go back in with one piece of cloth, what do you think first thing? Yeah, of course I want to offer this so that in li- next life I don't have to do this again. But at least they are very so sincere that they rather die now than not offer the, their last piece of survival equipment. Understand? Yeah. So that is very deep. Very strong already, but even then, when she offer that cloth, if she wish for liberation, Buddhahood, then she would <laughs> probably get that first, yeah. And maybe richness come also, yeah. Just too late, you see. Late better than never, yeah.、Huh? So she still enjoy richness, have no suffering, nothing, and then later she also become a heart, yeah.、Huh? Many like that, but the Buddha. On the contrary, on the contrary, yeah, whatever he does, you know, in the story that we read, whatever he does, he always transfer this merit to Buddhahood, for forward Buddhahood. Yeah, he never asks for richness or or any uh, heavenly uh, god or anything like that. But even then, by the way, he enjoy it too. Yeah, he enjoy the being born in heaven as god. Or being born as human, as prince, because he give a lot of charity and he's very, very generous all the time. Yeah, but of course, I told you that he has been a Buddha for a long time before that. Now it's logical, no?、Yes. Otherwise, anyone in such any situation would immediately wish to become a god in heaven or to enjoy heavenly bliss or or to enjoy richness. Yeah, he never did that. Whatever he does, however terrible the sacrifice, he always for heaven,、uh, for for Buddhahood, so that he can save other people, you know,、uh, for long lasting, long lasting happiness, not just save them from hunger only. Yeah. yeah. But even then, he always did that. He also save his people from hunger and thirst. Therefore, he has always been born as prince or. A heavenly being and all that, nah? Okay, very good. Now you know. You know everything.、Uh, you know everything. Okay, huh? All right. 
Let's go take rest, huh? Yes. I think you need it. <laughs> so tired, huh? Thank you for getting up every day to cook. It, they are going soon, right? Two, three days you're going, right? Nine of nine. It's the same, not too long. And then who who will be cooking then? Somebody else? Anybody? You stay longer? October? Okay, and you need some assistant. You just pick one. Two people. Uh, you ask any man, chop, chop. <laughs> chop vegetable for you. <laughs> but there are less and less people now, so it's, it's easier, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, you also going soon? Tomorrow? Next days? No. In three days? It's the beginning, you said, but now it's um, 5th September. 5th September? It's more or less, no? Yes. It's the same. Sunday more. 1st so September or 5th September, what's the difference? Oh. 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 Days the difference. <laughs> Why you keep bargaining? In the beginning, you used to go at 24 or 28, and then 1st September, and then 5th September. I don't know, so at 5th September, what do you tell me again? <laughs> It's good. I mean, all of you can stay, of course. You know that, yeah? I don't mind. Just your situation depends, yeah? Yeah, it's not that I don't want. I don't mind. You stay, no problem. Hmm? Yeah. The house is very big, so... <laughs> we have a lot of facilities, yeah? Two bathrooms, two toilets. What else you want? No, three. Uh, what else do you want? You have everything. Yeah, food. Yeah, you have food, yeah, yeah. drink, have bathroom, <laughs> <laughs> drivers, yeah, cameraman. <laughs> yeah, so so it will be just uh, maybe ten people stay, right? Everybody else go home, right? Yeah. In September, how many people are the whole September? Raise hand. Uh, September, the whole September. Okay. And then, uh, no, the whole September, not just 5 September. <laughs> <laughs> You're going soon anyway. So how many behind there? Four. Six, six. six people. The whole, the whole September. Uh, the whole September. I mean, until the end of September, more or less. Oh, very long, very little, so no, no need to cook, really. <laughs> <laughs> oh, each one go cook for himself. <laughs> this is very simple then. Huh? Okay, yeah. So can uh, can we come back again? Sure, can. Sure, of course. Just difficult for you, and you have to jump on airplane again. And go. Of course, you can come back. No problem. Just because your family, otherwise I don't have to tell you to go. You do what you do, okay? Yeah. My house, your house, you know already. You live here, I don't. You know that. <laughs> huh? We invade. You invaded my house. No, you, you are welcome in my house, yes. I'm glad that this, this uh, simple place of uh, bricks and stones and wood can serve you. <laughs> Serve you and be some use. Otherwise, otherwise the house just stand doing nothing. Yeah, at least somebody come here and sit and also do nothing <laughs> <laughs> to match it with the house. <laughs> yeah, it's good. You come, go, whatever you like. Okay, huh? This is your house. Mikasa is su casa. Yeah, you know that. Yeah. My house is your house. Truly, I mean it. Yes, you know that. Too. Yeah. It's so warm here. Yeah, of course. You're very welcome. You know that. You know very well. I'm so glad that I can offer this house for you. I never thought I, I could, you know. I thought house don't have anything, you know. How am I going to take care of you? Only two, three bathrooms, you see, and very small house, not enough room. So I never thought about that, but that day it just, I don't know, it just feel like desperate, you know? Got to go first and then think later. <laughs> Maybe I was also busy, too busy, just cannot think anymore. <laughs> so the crazy idea just come and it's okay, let's do it. Yeah, yeah, I just thought about that and we did it immediately. Yes. I didn't give time to think, understand? 
I thought, oh, we, we, we can make it, no problem. Yeah. I was thinking we can ask the neighbor, you know, so to rent his house, but I never seen him, so, yeah. But it's also, as long as we can manage here, it's more, more compact. Huh? Enough? Oh, okay. Yeah, it's more compact, you know, easy to find people and less, less distracting. Let's come, go, come, go. Like the whole, whole con- convoy, you know. Go into neighbor, come back, go in there, come back. It's better atmosphere here too. Better here, of course, it's my house. No. <laughs> it was uh, very difficult to find this place. Yeah? I have to come often here in order to look for the place. Come, go, come, go. Every time, like 10, 12 hours drive. Come, go, come, go. And not every house I like, yeah? And then suddenly I saw this one, a little advertised, very small, very, very small. I have to use a... Uh, huh? Magnifying glass to look at the advertisement. And then I like it. And that, that time is already eight, nine, nine o'clock in the evening already. But the agent is happy to come show me the house. And the owner also happy. Yeah. When I come, I don't see much, but I know I like. Just like that. It's so dark, you know. <laughs> don't see much. But I say, okay, I'll have from here to there, and the garden from there to there. I say, okay. <laughs> and the price also okay. I did not bargain anything. I say, okay. <laughs> and it's, you know, that's how it's done, you know. Yeah. But before coming here, we have to wait. I have to wait for many months, you know, for bureaucracy work and all that, yes. But then it's okay. Then we got it right away, yeah. After signing, it's done, yeah. And I kept almost as is, yeah. And just the ceiling. Because uh, this is kind of rustic house, you know. The ceiling, the beam is very big and very beautiful. But I'm not sure if it's very good feng shui, so I covered it. <laughs> you see, all the stone are original. You see the stone behind the sofa in the kitchen and all that, yeah. It's only a small farmer house. The people live here before they live, they live off the land, you know. They plant a lot of tomato, vegetable, beautiful, and trees, yeah. And uh, the lady is selling flowers. The husband stay home, take care of all these big olive trees. Yeah, and then plant vegetables. So they're a very happy couple. Yes. There was a dog, also a small like Benny. Yes. When I came in, he jumped out, you know, and welcomed me a lot. Yeah. And after we signed the contract already, and I come back again, he keep barking very loud, like, come here, come here. And he, he lit me in the way, said, this is your house now. Oh. And the, the owner think that he's angry. I said, no, 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 he's not angry. Yeah, he was barking very loud and keep and keep running in front and keep looking at me and running and looking, running, looking. Yeah, yeah. They're very excited. Like this is your house now. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, beautiful dog. They the animals they know everything. They so so very very intuitively intelligent. Intuitive. Okay. So, anything else? Any no problem? No. no. We're going. Okay. I let you rest, huh? You. So my skin rests a little. Oh, it feels so hot. Okay, huh? You know already. You're very welcome. Okay. If if you go, I wish you a good, safe, safe trip home. If you stay, you're welcome. Mm. Okay. If if you come back, you're welcome. Okay. Everything welcome. Mm. All right. Ciao. <laughs> Ciao, Bella, Bella. <laughs> oh. oh, what? <laughs> Something on my leg that you like? <laughs> oh, I'm coming, going, take my time. <laughs> 
want me to leave so quick. I run, I run. I'm running. I can do it, my guy. Everybody likes to take my bike. I don't know why. ท่านผู้ชมที่เมตตากรุณาเราชื่นชมที่ท่านมาเป็นเพื่อนสำหรับรายการในวันนี้ที่มีชื่อว่าเรื่องราวในพุทธศาสนาเด็กหญิงที่เกิดมาพร้อมกับผ้าไหมสีขาวตอนที่3ของ3ตอนระหว่างอาจารย์และลูกศิษย์โปรดจูรับชมโทรทัศน์สุเปมาสเตอร์สำหรับรายการทางบวกที่มากกว่านี้รายการต่อไปคือจากคัมภีร์พุทธศาสนาทำมาจากกัปปวัตนสูตรตอนที่3ของ4ตอนในถ้อยคำเหตุปัญญาขอให้ความรักและแสงแห่งสวรรค์ซึมซาบและยกระดับวิญญาณที่งดงามของท่าน May happily love and life infiltrate and uplift your beautiful souls For more details Please visit suprememastertv.com/vmd. forward